Welcome back to the PFRPA podcast. I'm your host, Brian DeMarco, and today I am here with Jamarca Sanford. Jamarca, how you doing, man? I'm doing great, man. Fabulous. Yo, glad y'all, glad to be here. You know, glad uh, for y'all to have. Me. Let's let's talk about here. We are in Miami. Yes, right? the best, one of the best cities I ever been to. So I'm gonna say it's the best. Yeah. Are are you from this area originally? Uh, well, I stay here now, but I'm uh, originally from Mississippi. So you live here yes. in Miami. Yes. Man, what is that like? Ah, I mean, it's, it, it don't get <laughs> are any you better. You staying out of trouble, man? <laughs> oh, definitely, 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 definitely staying out of trouble. You know, I'm a family man. You know, but uh. I mean, it's one of the greatest cities just waking up every day to sunlight, you know, and, you know, year round, you know, you have to travel off to get cold weather. So, I mean, that's one thing that I love about it. Yeah, it's it's just absolutely beautiful here. I, I love this area. So so let's let's uh, let's wind it back for folks and let's talk a little bit about about you and your playing career. Then we're going to talk about things like your transition. And then I want to talk about what you're doing now, what you All have right. going on. So tell me, tell me, uh, give me some bio on your, on your playing history, college, where'd you go to school? Tell me about your NFL career, where you played. Well, I started off, I uh, played high school football in uh, Mississippi. Called University of Sapinola. We call it the University. I, I can't tell by that accent, <laughs> right? <laughs> we call it University of Sapinola because you know we that's uh, we know how to play football there. You know we got like twelve championships and went off and got a degree. Oh, I got a scholarship. I'm sorry, got a scholarship uh, to uh, University of Mississippi. Okay, and played uh, red shirt in my first year and uh, started after that and played my next four years and luckily got drafted by the Minnesota Vikings in the seventh round, two hundred and thirty. 31st pick and nice. you no know, went there and I knew you know I caught a one-way flight I knew I couldn't leave <laughs> so, di- couldn't go back to Mississippi not uh under day terms so I had to go yeah. back to Mississippi under my own terms and ended up playing up there for five years and stayed there from 09 to 2014 and went to to um, Washington Washington Redskins Played there like three weeks, had a coffee yeah, right, stop, right. a coffee stop, <laughs> right. drunk that, a cup of coffee, that, cup, that of cup, cup of coffee, coffee. right? <laughs> so then, you know, they released me, and I ended up going to uh, New Orleans Saints in 2014 and oh, played nice. there from 14 to 16 and ended up retiring after my 16 year due to injuries and, you know, just multiple injuries after injuries and – it's uh, that's all of us though, right? I oh, mean, yes. it all ends because we all get hurt. You yes, know? yes. You know, not we, too many of us just to tip the cap and say, "Hey, well, I'll see you later." You right. Know? No, it, <laughs> it hardly ever. Ninety nine percent of the time, it don't end. It, I just feel like retiring today. <laughs> I'm, you know, <laughs> right? I, I, we all dream about that. Right, right. Right. I think it's just from those old movies, right? When you see like I don't know. Babe Ruth type moment, the happy right? ending. Like, uh, <laughs> and the crowd goes wild. Yes. <laughs> Instead, it's a black trash exactly, bag exactly. <laughs> sneaking out the back door. <laughs> All right. Well, right. You come in one day, next day, oh, they're kicking you out. Yeah, that's right. Not to return again. So I used to tell rookies all the time. I go, you see that name above locker, right? You see why it slides it out. It slides. <laughs> right? It's not Seriously. permanent. <laughs> at all. At That's all. Right. You can co- leave there tomorrow and come back and somebody else's name there. You're like, man, I was there for 10 years and now out of nowhere I'm gone. Like man, it, it happened you know, like that. You know, you know it, 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 and it's funny that, you know, one of the things I've learned is, is you know, no one is bigger than the game. No, never, never. You know, and, and if you look back on the history of, of sports – uh, you know, I remember when Joe Montana left the 49ers, they actually mm-hmm. went and played for the Chiefs for a little bit, and then with his eventual retirement, so we thought, okay, the 49ers will never be the same, right? Right, which wasn't true, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, but you think, and once he retired, you think, oh, you know, football is never going to be the same. And, and the other big one was when Michael Jordan retired, well, right. for the final time, right? right. The NBA will never be the same. There'll never be another Jordan. And then here we go. You know, we got guys like LeBron, of course, and right. then Kobe. Oh, my right. gosh. Well, the that's probably a good transition as any right yeah, there. it is. So, <laughs> you, you know, you talk about Kobe, you know, Kobe Bryant and, and his unfortunate passing. I think that just – I think it broke everybody's heart. Just, no, it did. It, whether it did. you were a fan or not, not. he was just – he was such a, a, a huge figure and, and obviously, you know, just great family man. Right. He was a great humanitarian. But, you know, even guys like Kobe who were so great, the game moves It's on. move. It's like life, right. you know. You lose someone important and you think, oh, how can I move on, you know, move forward without this person? And, yeah. it's, I mean, you have to find a way, you know. It's just life, you know. It's, it's tough, but, you know, yeah. like the game of football, you know, you – no matter how big your name is, you're replaceable. And 
the game gonna continue to grow and continue to move on with or without you. So yeah, just have to enjoy you know the time you're there and just know you know it, it's gonna end one day. Well, and you take that same thing, that same thought process over to the the transition from being an NFL player to being a normal civilian, right, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> which you know you're still in the thick of because yes. you didn't retire till 2016, yes. right. You know, mine was forever ago. Oh, my gosh, it's been 20 years. <laughs> it's crazy how fast Oh, my now. gosh, it's been 20 years. Well, you know, like I shared with you before we started filming, it took me a good five years to yeah. figure things out and, right. and to find out the truth of it is every man needs purpose. Yes, definitely, right? definitely. It, it, and we talked about, you know, in my personal experience, I had this – this time period where I was just so lost. Right. Like I, I didn't know what to do with myself. Why work out? Why do anything? You know, and I was hurt too. I had a right. really bad injury uh, coming out of the league. So, you know, I had all these things going on, but that just that loss. So, you know, what do you, from your perspective, what, what's the answer here? What's the answer to really help guys? Everybody's talking about transition. Now you see transition coaches popping up all over LinkedIn, right? Too many <laughs> at times, right? <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, what, do you, what do you think the answer is? What do guys need? Um, I, I don't think I just have an answer, but I, I, I would say, you know, just try to find something else that you, you know, you would like to do outside of football, you know, because, you know, we've been doing this our whole life, so it's, it's kind of hard, you know. We, you play football so much. You go through training camp. You go through the season, and you're traveling week in and week out. Come to off season, all you want to do is go somewhere like Miami and you know enjoy the vacation because you know you only have that short window where you will be back to work and it's yeah. locked. You got to lock right back in. So the time, your free time, you're really trying to enjoy yourself and you know see family members mm -hmm. and travel. So you really can't even focus on what's your next move out the football. So yeah. I think that's a big thing too. But I mean, I would say, you know, just find a, find something that you got a passion for. And, and no matter what it is, you know, just find something outside that can take your time from football because you never know when it's over. You know, they always have people come in and talk to you. You know, you got your older guys, vets come in. They, when you're a rookie, you know, I heard it a lot. You know, hey, start doing this or start doing that. You know, start focusing on what you want to do after football. And you like, bro, I'm going to play 10 years. Yeah. I'm not worried <laughs> about that. Like, I worry yeah. about that then. But you don't realize tomorrow it can be over with. And, like, for my situation, it was like out the blue it ended. You know, it was I had a hip injury and never was the same after it. And so, like, football just ended, and you're going to go through that dark moment. Like, yeah. I had a dark moment where, you know, from I'm going to say from 16, really all 16, because I would actually end it my career on IR. That's when I had my hip yeah. Yeah. surgery. So it was difficult going through that year of not going, with, going without football and it's some, doing something that you do every day. You know, you locked in, you do – you going to the locker room, you enjoying the fellas, you going out practicing. Everything is just fun and out of nowhere it's just like you in the dark by yourself. Like that's that's your family. Like you not you're not with your family, your family, you know, that you, you were raised right. with. It's more of now your your football is your family. So right. once they take that away, it's like they taking part of your life away. Yeah. So now it's like when the reality really sit in is when you not able to go over there to hit the sauna or the steam room. You have to find somewhere to work out and you look around, you like Man, these everyday people that, you know, going to work and, you know, doing, you know, <laughs> yeah, enjoying yeah. their lives and, you know, just living their lives. But you didn't see that side because you had the facility to work out with. You had right. your guys that you hung with every day. So it's 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 a, it's, it's a life changer. Like, it's yeah. it's something, like you said, that every player is going to deal with. Even if you got it figured out, it's like it's still going to be a difficult thing to do yeah. because it's you want to compete. As a football player, you want to compete. And, and we're so, you know, we're so – locked away and sequestered right. or playing right so your life really becomes the you know you have your home of course right but then you have your second home which is your facility yes and the travel between there and that's really about it that's it right and, and so your world becomes that atmosphere and just in in the strangeness of you know i tell folks this a lot of of you know you're in the nfl you know you're making a lot of money all your friends make a lot of money. Right. So you just how just demented and how that changes your percep perception of reality. Yes. And, and so when that hits you when you're done, so automatically it was figuring out how to not spend money. Right. Because I'm, no I'm not, I'm not going to make this anymore. <laughs> right. Like, oh, my gosh, there's no more game checks coming in. No right. bonuses. No, right. You know, and, and figuring out how to 
downsize quickly. And as right. we know, a lot of guys go through they problems struggle. with that, yes. really struggle with that. And, and, you know, the reality is I think some guys – are beginning to see the light a little bit earlier. And, and I think you can attest to this. You know, when, when guys come to talk to you and they say, you know, NFL, not for long, and right. get ready for the next phase. And But when we're there, we're like, yeah, yeah, I get it. I get it. I'm, I'm going to be fine. Right. right? I'm going to play for 10 years. <laughs> I'm going to ride off into the sunset. Right. <laughs> right. right. Me, I was just going to go hunting for the rest of my life, yeah. man. I literally, I was going <laughs> to cowboy up, <laughs> get on my horse, yeah. and ride. That that's how I thought my retirement would go. Right. And, and it was anything but that. And I had the darkest of days, man. I thought there were there was a couple year period in there where I thought I was going to be another NFL suicide statistic. Mm -hmm. Like I was in that dark of a space. And, and as we know that the the mental health aspect of this is a real, yes. real deal. Uh, you know, and there's so many things that guys need to – you know, we see them falling into these pitfalls, whether it's, you know, it's opioid addiction, right. it's drinking, it's all this stuff, try, just trying to drown out right. reality, right? So how do you think, when it comes to the transition, what, if, if just from your perspective, what do you think we need to do? Because personally, I think we need to take it on as, as NFL brothers. Right. We, we need to kind of more open arms, exactly. welcome each other in. I know right. that's a big part of why the, why the PFRBA has been established, right? So what do you think that, that one important thing is? Like how do we, how do we begin to, to uh, help guys better adjust to the transition period? I think uh, like conversation like we're having now, you know, you see – you know, former players really talk about their situation because as men, we don't really want to never open up and tell our situation. Yeah. And a yeah. lot of people think you don't even go through it because you don't talk about it. Yeah. And I think the more we talk about it, players are going to really open their ears and realize, like, man, this guy here played 15 years or 14 years. He dealing right. with the same problem that the guy played two years or five years, you know, so everybody dealing with the same problem. I think it's just more of making a topic to talk yeah. about and actually, you know, talking to the guys. And I think today is – the uh like you say it kind of you see the transition a look a little better than you know you normally recently saw it yeah. in years because the social media platform oh, that they have for sure so it's like you no build doubt. up your network of who you are you now as football player we have a helmet on it's not like basketball player where everybody know you once they see you like they don't really identify you unless you know you pay manny or drew Brees somebody right. but the regular, just normal football player that everybody don't know you. Or they, you're a six, seven like, gorilla. Exactly. So, <laughs> right. so. Or, or they don't know you're a football player. They say, right. You're either WWE wrestler, <laughs> football player. Right. Right. So I get so, it. Yeah. So, so things like that, you know, that's, I think that's what's going to help us, you know, help transition. But it's like you got a platform now where you can build your brand yourself and put out yeah. to the people who you are and, you know, know you beside the football player that you are massively with. important point you just made and I, and I think guys are doing it really much much better now yes. building your own personal yes. brand and creating value in your brand because you know we tell guys this all the time if you played a down one snap in right. the nfl you have brand value yes there definitely. is there's some brand equity definitely. there it may be in your hometown right maybe in your college town right uh it, you know or in your pro town across the country but no matter what, right. there is equity in your own personal brand, and it's just so critically important to build. Because, heck, when I, when I was done, I officially retired in 01. I mean, think about it. There's no Facebook. Right. There's None no of, LinkedIn or nothing. Twitter, Instagram. Right. I mean, that stuff. <laughs> so it's even, even more involved. difficult. It's more <laughs> difficult for someone like yeah. that. So now you seeing it now from when you retired, it's like, man, I wish I had half of what these yeah. guys have today. Yeah. And But it's guys like in my situation – still lost you know and and got all these you know, networks that you can network with and yeah. build your brand so i mean just something like i said i think we just need to talk about amongst each other so you can know that you're not the only one dealing with a and situation because and we all we all know this kind of inherently but it's kind of like you know we just we just met today right right so whatever that unique thing is of this brotherhood like that that instant bond right as, as soon as we knew right we, we each played shared a little bit of experience like we're just brothers, right out right we can relate we, we, we went through the same thing right and so it i i just think that's so uniquely special the only thing that i have found even close to that is military veterans yes these guys coming back because they get it there's something look when when you 
the sweat, blood, sweat, and tears, right? Yes. When you push yourself to the kind of limits Maybe. that we push each other to, yes. you know, when it's revealing your true character of right. who you really are right. in those moments, it, that's where I think that's where this bond just gets totally cemented. Yes, right. Because you have a you have a different respect for guys. You know, you you know what this guy put put his body through for you, not just for himself, yeah. but for his team. Yeah. You know, you know just. The, 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 the chemistry you have just hanging out, you know, just having a good time and then going on the field and working together, you know, and putting the work in. I mean, it just build a bond. Like you said, it, you know, it can't be broken. You know, we walk right in this yeah. room. We never saw each other. And, yeah. like, right off, we, like, right. just connected because, you know, we have similarities or the things right. we have been through, you know, just football. I mean, that's one thing I love about sports. It brings – I don't care what your nationality is yep. or what what uh, your, your, your uh, religion is. Like, yep. we come together as brothers and – None of that matter, you know. Ever. We love each other for who we are, right. you know. As a matter of fact, I've been I've been talking about that a lot lately, and I think the world needs to to emulate the locker room a little bit more. Yes, I, I, because yes, w- because we grew up in an environment playing football. Right. I I don't even think that ever had like crossed my mind at any point in time of whether what race you were, what Never. faith you were. No, it what, didn't matter. Like, it didn't matter. It was just playing ball. We, right. We're here, right? we here for one thing, baby. We're trying to win, and we're going to work together, man. That's and right. Like I said, it, none of that matter. Like, that bring, that's one thing I like about sport. It, bring, it brings you together. Like you, you, like, you never walk in a locker room and see one race or one religion. Right. Everybody is – You need a ball or you can't? Right? Exactly. And, and <laughs> do I want you to have you on my exactly. team? And okay, once exactly. you prove yourself, right, and, and that, that bond is just – it's just so unique, man. So, so let's talk a little bit about – about what you're doing now you're you're four years out from retiring now yes i'm 20 <laughs> <laughs> but I'm oh thinking, my gosh that's you, scary man you're saying 20 and i'm like wow. i'm like four already <laughs> wow i know it's unbelievable man i you know because I, I in jacksonville this year they uh you know got this notice it was the uh 25 year anniversary of that first team and, and so <laughs> like Holy cow. So I think about like your age group that you grew up with the Jacksonville Jaguars, Carolina Panthers. You were seeing them. You right. They were just a team. Right. So when we got there, it was like people treat us like we are a CFL team. Like, <laughs> is that an NFL? <laughs> right, right. Just <laughs> right? disrespect. And it still didn't feel real for me because right. I remember the, the, the very first year in 95, we played in the Hall of Fame game. Mm-hmm. And, and I was excited. It's my first pro game. But we were playing against the Carolina Panthers. So still, just <laughs> didn't feel right, right? right? I was right. like, this isn't a league. You don't see those <laughs> right. logos anywhere, right. right? It really didn't hit me, actually, until that very next week we played the Miami Dolphins. Yeah. And that's when it hit me. Yeah. Like, all right, Dan Marino's, I'm running out in the field mm. to go warm up. <laughs> and I'm seeing Dan Marino over there warming up, throwing passes. I'm going, Holy crap! I'm in the NFL, man. Hey, <laughs> right, Dan Marino. <laughs> I, I did that. I did that because it's funny. Uh, Dave uh-huh. Wydell, who is our center, then he he played about maybe seven or eight years for the Broncos before uh-huh. that, and I I just remember him smacking me in the back of my head or rocking on the field. <laughs> I was like, I was going, Hey, Dave. I was like, I, That's that's Dan Marino. <laughs> <laughs> he smacks me in the back of the head. He's like, He's like, kid. You're in the league now, <laughs> right? You're right. gonna see a lot more of them. Right? <laughs> oh man! So, so anyway, let, let let's uh let's talk about what you're doing now. What do you got going on business wise? Well, in business wise, I uh I'm into real estate now. I'm an investor. I'm actually I have my license too, real estate license. But oh, I'm more, nice. I'm nice. aiming more towards the investment side. So I'm doing my first office building right now, and uh, we should be done in a couple of weeks. Six. Are, are you doing spaces. it here in the South Florida area? Oh uh, yes, uh, it's out. Uh, Kendall area, out towards Kendall area. Okay, very yes. cool, man. So I got my first project, so I'm very excited about that, and you know, nice. that's my first project. And I also have a, a app. I'm, uh, me and my friend Mike Orr, that's one of my best friends. Oh, yeah. We okay. uh, got together and we're doing an app right now. So, What's the app all about? Tell me uh, all about good it. deeds. It's good deeds. So good it's deeds. basically like connecting people. Like they, you know, how you go to Goodwill and give stuff to them, or you know, sell stuff yeah, yeah. back to them, or, or you give it to them and they sell it, or however you know. But we want to create a platform where we can connect people within your community that you can connect through the app and whoever, whatever you need, you can connect each other and just give it to them directly instead oh of, you know, gosh. donating to That's actually whoever really and, cool, man. Yeah, so we it's right now that's in the works. 
So do you have a website? Oh, not not right not now. It, it, it's in the future. So in about another, we, we we pushing towards May for it to drop. Okay. So right now we're still working so on it. So by the time this hits, this may be in that time frame, right? Depending where it is in the cycle. But you, we gotta, I'll give you my card. Just okay, stay then. in touch. Shoot me an okay, email, then. like wherever we can All send right, people we'll do. to go we'll to do. this for sure. So good deeds. That's, that's actually really cool. I, I actually, uh, it reminded me of something. I, I live in a really small town outside of Austin, right? Mm-hmm. So our office is in Austin, okay. right? But I live outside, way out in the country, and and this is kind of the funniest thing. I think it's maybe just a southern thing. Yeah. But there's this table that sits on the side of the road, and it has for years. Mm-hmm. And people just put stuff on it, right? And, like, giving it away. Like, ni- okay. nicer things, okay. like, giving it away. Like, oh, you know, whether it be clothing, they'll put it in a box and kind of secure it. But it was a place for people on this country road. You just know it's there. Yeah. Everybody in the neighborhood does. And you stop by, see what people are just giving away. And if you, if you take something... You're supposed to leave something. Oh, okay. Right? So literally, it's a table just like the one we're sitting at, and it just has a few things on it. But if you go and you take something, you give something back. That's awesome. I know. It's been going awesome. on for, for years. And, and it's still there. Still right there. to this day. Still That's there. Awesome. And people still do it, man. It's it's just really neat little thing, man. It's, uh, you know, I think it's a cool southern thing. Yeah. I think some of our Yankee friends may not get that. Yeah. But, <laughs> right, right? but Southern, we, we yeah, get it. South. We get it. We're always trying to help, you know, find yeah, a way to help stop each and other. help people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? So that's, I mean, that's one of the reasons why we wanted to – we were trying to come up with something. And Good Deed was, uh, you know, the thing we came up with, you know, like I said, connect people to give, you know, whatever you want to give back within your community or you can go wherever because, you know, you always see yeah. different people. You know, you see – you go to the grocery store, they say donate to – wherever and donate to this person but you never know where it's going so if you actually got something that you want to con- you know put on the app and yeah. you know take a picture of it and send it on the app and whoever in need you know you just basically connect y'all together where you know your stuff getting directly getting gave to this family so it's like oh my you know, gosh that's cool and, and doing that on a community level i could see that spreading across the country that's really cool what a concept yes. man yes i mean we we hopefully you know everything you know working out favor and it should be out like i said no later than may Oh, that's cool. How long have y'all been working on that? that uh, app? We, we were shooting to it. We were we were shooting for December to drop it, but it was a few things we needed to figure out before we drop it. So we pushed the date back a few more months. Okay. So we've been working on it since probably I'll say September, October, okay. somewhere. Okay. Now. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the the business world and the the real world education and the time, the, the think, things you think you know right. when you're playing, like you're just gonna snap right. into business. Right. And, and one of the things that drives me crazy, and I'm gonna say it again, guys, just because you played in the NFL, right. does not mean your business is gonna win. No, never, <laughs> right? that don't mean nothing. That's, that's a whole nother ball game. Nobody cares. <laughs> right, nobody <laughs> care about that, no, nobody no. Nobody cares. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's a different world, like you say, you know, I mean, you coming from like I said, doing something that you know out the back of your mind, you close your eyes doing, you know, football, yeah. and took going into something that you have no clue about. Yeah. So I mean, I, I mean, my recommendation is actually finding someone that's in that field that can you can really guide you and you know put you in the right direction because trying yeah. to get into something that you know nothing about, I mean, it's pretty difficult. Yeah, I had a, um, I, I've I've been very blessed to have a, a couple of very successful companies. Yes. Um, but I remember just the learning curve was massive. And, and I knew, too, that um, putting that CEO by my name, it wasn't something that I took lightly. As a matter of fact, it was years yeah. before I would even allow myself to do that. In, in the beginning, one of my first company, I'd put dumb things like Grand Poobah, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put founder in there, something, yeah. because the guys that I w- were mentoring me, like these were CEOs. Mm-hmm. And I had so much learning to do in the business world. I mean, these guys were like, you know, CEOs of New York Stock Ex- Exchange wow. traded billion dollar companies. Right. That was a CEO to me. So it, it, it bo- one of the things that bothered me about retired players is that you'd see so many guys just putting CEO by their name yeah. because they went and filed for an LLC. Right, right, and right. And All they sudden, think that's it, you that's know. That's it. You're right. I'm like, oh my gosh. It, it, there's so much, you know. So much going to it that you don't have a clue. Yeah, especially, you know, if whether you're an LLC or right. a C-Core or an S-Core. I mean, right. board meetings and minutes and, <laughs> you know, financial reports. I mean, you know the deal. But it's uh, it, it's it's amazing. It, it, it's one of the things I tell guys, too, and I think you're exactly right, surrounding yourself with people that have been there, done that yes. in the business world. 
so that you can just start that learning process right. and put, you know, and put that same energy that you put into football into that, into that, in your business world. And you're going to be just fine. I mean, j just exactly yeah. what you just said, because I mean, the thing about football, it prepare you for whatever you're going to go through in life. Right. It's just, you have to find something that you love, just like you love football and put that same energy into it. Because if not, it's not going to work. I mean, just like football, if you don't put that same energy, That's it's right. not going to work. But like I said, it come down to surrounding yourself around the right people. Like I always, I live by the saying, you are who you hang around. I yeah, mean, you trying to learn totally. a bit and you can't hang around a bunch of your friends that don't know nothing about just throwing ideas out the wall. Oh man, we can do this. Let's open up this restaurant. I know this, but you know nothing about the business side of it. You yeah. have an idea about some, some good food you talking about, but you don't know <laughs> right. nothing about the permit you're going to need to build this building, the impact fees, or yeah. I mean, so much go into it that like with my first project is like, I didn't have a clue. I thought, you know, you can find a commercial property. You can just build whatever you want, long as commercial. Ah, yeah, yeah. Huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did not have a clue that you had to right. get permits. You got to get impact fees. It's like, you have to do all this all just to do work. this. Yeah, like, yeah. I didn't I didn't know. And if yeah. I didn't have the, my father-in-law to help me and guide me through it, I would be lost. I wouldn't know what to do. And it's easily get screwed over by someone that know the, know the business that, and you tied and to the wrong person. Thing. And that's a big thing. I tell, yes. I tell guys. Yeah, especially when you still have a little money, right? People will see you coming. They there see you. They see you as a money people. sign. Yeah, you a money just, sign walking up, just like, money, and they're going to yes. take it from you because you don't know, hey, right? Because you, you don't, don't have know. a clue. You don't know what you don't know. And, and I remember my early days. I would just, I would be impressed by anybody that used big business words. Mm -hmm. And I go, wow, they must be really smart. <laughs> they know exactly what they're doing. <laughs> you know, they're ripping you off. And you're, you know, right. You're 100,000 short. Right, exactly. <laughs> right? I mean, going, I oh saw so gosh. many of them stories. And it's um, like, it's sad, yeah. man. Like, it's it, people it, out here really doing people like that. And, yeah. no, it happens to people every day. Yeah. I, it's just like anything else, though, man. Like you said, it's surrounding yourself with good people. Yes. Right? I mean, that's 90% that's of, of, the, of the battle right there. Surrounding yeah. your circle. Having the right circle. Because I always say you are what you hang around. All right, man. Oh. That's awesome. Jamarco, this has been great, man. Thank yes, you, sir. Man. Thank you for Thanks having me. Thanks for hanging out. Yes, sir. Appreciate it, man. All right. All right. Until next time.